You know, growing our economy, it shouldn't be a partisan issue. Why does it always become such a partisan issue? We should be working with some kind of common goal here in that we want as many Americans to be as employed as possible and making as much money as possible. And yet we always get bogged down in this side or that. Joining me right now, Republican Congressman from Ohio, Warren Davidson. Representative, good to have you on the program. Thanks for talking with you, Trish. Why does economics become political all the time? Well, it's very disappointing. And the reality is in the House, there are a number of things in financial services that have been truly bipartisan. Uh, but ground zero for the resistance movement seems to be the Senate Banking Committee. And, and unfortunately, uh, I think some of the folks there, Elizabeth Warren, Sherrod Brown, have decided they'd rather say no to everything including tax reform, mm -hmm. but even sensible financial services reform that even Barney Frank supports, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's all political. They've, they've calculated that they're going to be rewarded for resisting going into November. And I think the American people, you know, as I've been out and about over this last two weeks, I'm on Cedarville University today, but I, all through our district, we've been talking to people who have been benefiting from tax reform already, and they're excited about the prospects in the days and months and years ahead. Yeah. You know, look, I, I've said before that the, the tax plan wasn't perfect. Um, there were still some things that I would have liked to have seen adjusted, but it's a heck of a lot better than what we had. And, uh, you know, for corporations to be paying less tax um, is, is such a step in the right direction, only in that we were so hindered, I think, as a country, because you go around the world and, heck, even Canada was play, paying less tax than us, uh, the U.K., Ireland, you name it. And so at least this gives our businesses an opportunity to compete out there in the big world in which we live. Um, let me turn to Jamie Dimon for a moment because he uh, is not seen some, as someone who's, uh, you know, someone who's, who's a proponent of the Republican Party or of Donald Trump for that matter. And yet he came out in a very positive way uh, talking about many of the policies that the Trump administration has enacted. What do you make of that? Well, it's the same sort of thing. It's not like Barack Obama's friends, people like Tim Cook, forgot to make these big investments when Barack Obama was president. They're reacting to policy. And, you know, Apple alone's made a commitment of hundreds of billions of dollars. You're seeing the benefits of territorial reform on our tax code. Companies uh, in the insurance sector, I was just with an insurance company, Cincinnati Financial, uh, who are benefiting greatly from uh, the reforms that we did on tax reform. Right. Companies like Assurant here in Springfield, uh, they were in the midst of having to move offshore and, and domicile their business in Bermuda. Uh, the tax reform made it so that now they've canceled that and they're keeping all their activity here in the United States. They really do uh, have uh, big implications at corporate headquarters. And what happens with that? It happens all through the economy in terms of jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, so take home pay is gonna be up. Everyone I'm talking to, has moved off of regulation, off of taxes uh, to workforce. And how can we get more good people uh, in this economy to keep this economy growing? Yeah. And a big backstory behind that is this huge pro-growth tax reform that President Trump uh, and his team no, I, really I like pushed it. through. Yeah, no, I like it. I, I, again, I don't love all of it, but I like 95 percent of it in that I think it is exactly what this country does need right now in order to stay competitive. And, you know, Congressman, let's not forget JFK cut taxes. So this does not need to be a political animal, yet uh, too often it is. And I think it really reflects on how, uh, how uh, uh, political and divided um, our, our lawmakers are right now, because here's the reality. Sir, you need to get elected again. Y'all need to get elected again, right? And so as soon as you get there to D.C., you're focused on what's next. And I think uh, it, that leads in many ways to an increased division because you're not willing to give the other side anything for fear that they will get the credit. And in this case, when I say you, um, I'm actually talking about all of you, but it seems as though the Democrats increasingly, because you have a Republican in the White House, are that party of resistance right now. Well, that's their hashtag, and uh, that's really the, the strategy that they've decided to employ, which is disappointing. And I think Jamie Dimon's point uh, in, in his statement is, is show me a pro-growth Democrat. Uh, mm -hmm. Pro-growth to Democrats mean pro-growth of government. Mm -hmm. He's talking about how do we grow the economy. Uh, American families are talking about how do I grow my take-home pay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think re the reality is, is the average voter, as I'm out talking to him, is seeing increasingly who's been telling them the truth. 
This doesn't look like Armageddon. This looks like I'm going to take home more pay. This doesn't look like crumbs. It's meaningful <laughs> yeah. to me. Yeah. No, I mean, the crumbs statement, that'll go down the, in history for sure. Infamy. Thank you so much. Congressman, good to have you here. Congressman Davidson, everyone from Ohio.